Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And uh, we are past my month off. And we're going to get straight back into it. So, um, this is a crossover video. So this will be a video that's a standalone like it is. Um, but it also has to do with another thing that I'm doing. Uh, which will... I'll, it's no secret, I'll tell you in a sec. So these are um, studs. All right, there's a long one. These are not... Well, you could call them studs. Um, and you might have noticed with a lot of studs for like cylinder heads and so on and so on and so on that you'll have a fat end, another fat end. Now imagine these are the same. This is just one that isn't. Um, well, actually, in fact, we have um, the XJ studs, right? So the... Um, the stud there you see it has a thread on one end a thread on the other same as this this just has a skinnier and bigger fatter threader fatter threader and it then has this reduced section right so this is smaller same here you can see that it's reduced right you can see there it's reduced in diameter and and there's a reason for this right there's a reason that these have reduced diameters and the reason for it is that um, what matters in tensile um, stress, so basically when you get this and pull, because that's what you're doing, is if you think about it, imagine in the middle here where my fingers are, there's a cylinder, you're going through the cylinder into the engine block and then to the head just say, right? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to squash this cylinder and the head down, you know, to attach them to just say the core of the engine and um, for every force there's an opposite force right so if you squash this down that means this is being pulled right because it's it's opposing that and another way you can think about it is inside our cylinder there's a boom right so in here there's a boom and it's applying a force top and bottom down to the piston obviously but obviously up to the head and when that happens it's trying to push the whole thing off so this thing is under tension right and um tense tensile strength or tensile basically anytime you're pulling anything what matters is the cross section right so if you cut this you'd end up with a diameter you know what i mean not obviously not that size but you'd end up with a diameter and it's that diameter that matters right because it is that area there that's resisting the pull if you make this fatter like this one right there's a lot more diameter which means that this can take a lot more stress in other words if you think about it it's like a chain almost imagine this is like a you know like a chain right like a, a, a what do you call them actually just a ring chain you know, like a, a normal chain you know like for using a pulley or something not a bike chain but you could visualize that as well and you've got to think that each link in this chain you know, it's all being pulled and you're only as strong as your weakest link, yada, 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 yada. And it's actually, for a chain, it's actually how the cross-section of both of them two, the, the loop, it's the cross-section of them two together. Um, because it's the, all taking the load. Um, but any road, <laughs> any road, what's happening is you think about these links in these chains, and what's happening is you can think of those links as like, kind of like the atoms, right? They're, they're, they, my palms just say are two atoms, and then they've got this touchy feely bullshit that um, keeps them attracted towards each other. Yeah, and they're like hooks, like Velcro, and they're trying to hold. And eventually, you'll overcome the Velcro, and they'll come apart. Right? That's what's you can just think. Of, forget all the millions and millions of atoms. Just think of atom, 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 all held together with little little magnets, little neodymium magnets. And when you pull them they eventually will cut you you know you'll overcome that magnetic attraction basically that force at a distance kind of thing and they'll pop apart right and that is basically tensile strength so the more atoms you have right all with their little magnets holding on to each other obviously they share the load between them right so just like velcro or anything like that so that's basically what you know what's happening is that a material has a certain tensile strength and what it matters is the area, the cross-sectional area, when you're pulling like this, right? 
So this is the crazy thing, is that sometimes I get comments saying, oh, what you just said about blah is total bullshit, and I'm a mechanical engineer, and the stuff that they say give away that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So I go, bollocks, you're a mechanical engineer. What the fuck? You know, they're trying to just... And um, it's an argument from authority, which doesn't matter anyway. I might prove your case. But they say, I don't have to answer to you. I'm a mechanical engineer of fucking 15 years. So there's a question. Now, I'm going to ruin it now, if they see this video. But there's always a question I ask people. I say, you know what tensile strength is, don't you? And they're like, yeah, everyone knows what tensile strength is, because they've just Googled it. And then I say to them, why is tensile strength, right, or the stress that something can withstand, why, like, just say UTS, which is ultimate tensile strength, why is that measured in pressure? <laughs> right? And usually, you're a fucking knob, and they go away. It's because they can't answer that. Now, weirdly enough, it's a very, it's a very simple question. It has a very simple, straightforward answer. And people who are just, you know, bike enthusiasts or whatever, and just like to think they know how something works, and they're just giving it this, don't know why it's in pressure. Right? And if you go, why is, you know, tensile strength measured in pressure? There generally isn't an answer, and this is, you know, I've checked. Right? <laughs> you have to go really dig in, and you can't do it instantly. You can't do it very quickly. The reason why is because we're looking at a, so let me, I'm just grabbing what's right in front of me because I've got no paper. Where was that pen? Pen, there's a pen. Right, so, because I've got no paper at, at hand, I'll just, I'll just use this. So, you've got an area, so it's a cross-sectional area, you know what I mean? We've got this and we've gone, hi -ya! and chopped it in half. So we have our cross-sectional area, like this. And then we're trying to apply a force. So this is an area. We're trying to apply a force to pull that cross section, you know, or two things either side of that split apart. Right. So our area gives us our uh, number of atoms that are holding onto each other. Right. And then the force. Right. So the force. Pulling in either direction, you know what I mean? It's actually just one, but there's a resistive force pulling the other way. Right? When you do that, we have a force being applied over an area. And if you look at the definition of pressure, it's force over an area. Yeah. So it can be pounds of force per square inch, which is an area. It can be newtons per millimeter squared, which is a pascal, a pascal, and that's pressure. Right, so I'm going to do some more videos coming up soon about some of these engineering terms, physics terms mainly, um, but how we use these things. The thing is, you're getting this and you're pulling this apart. Right, you stick this in a machine, you stick it on the other end, and it pulls until it snaps. Right, pressure. It it seems counterintuitive. If anything, it feels like anti-pressure. You're not squashing something, right? But you might say, well, the pressure in a balloon is pushing out, right? And you say, well, this is kind of pushing. Yeah, but there's no force inside there trying to push out on all of the surface area of this. It's just a cross-section. That's the whole point, right? Um, in physics, engineering, stuff. I usually say physics because it, it engineering is born out of physics, and it's the physical world we're talking about. This gives us a clue to we are using a force and an area. We'll just leave it there. But we've given this thing right, a name. We've given this mass and acceleration, which is what this is, a mass times acceleration, and this um, two-dimensional... Uh, it's an area, it's a two-dimensional... Not volume... <laughs> It's a two-dimensional counting method, right? To say how you know what the surface area is. This, so it's a dimension basically, and it's it's a force divided by a dimension, which is a mass times acceleration. So when you look at that, you're like, holy shit! We just call that pressure, regardless of what in our little puny monkey brains we think a pressure is. It doesn't matter, right? It just doesn't matter. 
it has a name so it is it looks like pressure written down so we'll just call it pressure right it's in pascals it's in megapascals it's in gigapascals you know stuff like that and when you look at in, in deep into it you go oh fucking hell and when i did a video about um torque right the torque isn't a force right and i said this before and people lost the shit the torque specifically torque isn't a unique force right um it's a bit like this right this doesn't seem like a pressure but we just call it that it's all and I'm, i'll get into centripetal and centrifugal stuff later because that again is another one where you can have three things that are centripetal forces and you go hang about these things are nothing alike and that's because it's just like this yeah we gave it a name first kind of thing and then we found out that that applies to other things and we go all right well we'll just have to stick with that you know what i mean so that's how it works and this is why when you look in these textbooks and stuff they probably usually don't say the words like very much like pressure they'll just say that's a pascal right and you'll go you know why do you not just say pressure well the reason why we don't say pressure is because that loses that's a, a, you know like it's like a common tongue thing it loses its meaning its direct meaning any road so now we've cleaned that bit up right um, that's what I say. I usually ask them and say, why is tensile strength measured in pressure? And they'll go and look it up and it says, oh, it's pascals. And they'll look up a pascal and go, oh, that's pounds per square inch. Uh, what? It doesn't make any sense. Any road. <laughs> so that's, this is um, from the XJ. This is the old one. There's some nice fucking teeth marks and that horrible shitty extractor. We'll not be using that again. Um, and then this is a big one right that's a, a bigger that's an old one uh just basically the same kind of thing this is a uh these are test samples right so what you do is is if you get a block of metal let's just say that, just say we have this block of steel right and we go we've just cast this or we've just machined this we've just forged this or whatever as an engineering firm we want to know what the uh, tensile strength is we want to know we've promised our customers is usually it we've promised our customers that our steel abides to this standard right you know what i mean like when you go and look up and it says 1061 or something right it'll say it has a uts an ultimate tensile strength of blah right 680 gig megapascals or something doesn't matter whatever the number is right is that it'll just have a number and when you've manufactured your steel or whatever your alloys you've got to make sure <laughs> that you're actually abiding to that standard right because when people buy your 1061 or whatever when they buy that um they're expecting it you're the manufacturer of steels you should know your shit they're expecting this to do what it says on the tin because they could be making bridges out of this shit right they could be making crash barriers they could be making anything that requires it to function properly right so what you have to do is you have to test it now when you come to test it you've got that block right and then you'll have something like this oh that's a bit of tubing oh fuck already we've buggered it right or you might have something like a bit of plate like this right and it's like oh no ah it got me fucking cut my fucking hand yeah fuck you it bloody bit me that fucking razor sharp edge what a twat i didn't see the back end any road bleeding for you that's what's happening so when you got a bit of tubing like this or this solid block or whatever what the fucking hell do you do right so what you have to do is you have to create a standard get rid of that a second i don't need that because that's going to confuse things so you've got to create a standard um and that's what was that's what's been done right iso and stuff like that and uh, the bs the bullshit and the uh, uh <laughs> the astm stuff like that right the the astm is the american standards of testing materials it kind of gives away what they do the bs the bullshit is just british standard um and then you have iso and a few others there's din and there's j um oh gis which you know you've the japanese industrial standard 
and all this kind of awesomeness. Any road. Um, what you got to do is you've got to create a thing. So this is where these come in. Obviously, this one isn't the right length. It's just a bit shy. But you have certain sizes of these, right? So you imagine you have this one. And then you'll have a, a smaller one. It's actually about this big, and I haven't got one. But you have a smaller one, and so on. And you have bigger ones and smaller ones. And they're specific sizes, and they have specific threads cut on them. But this diameter and this radius, this is all specific. These ones are actually junk, right? These ones didn't turn out too well, though. I think they were undersized. Um, but you have a, a specific diameter. Now, as long as the diameter here is smaller than the threads, it will always break here along here somewhere you know what i mean it'll always fail here and that's what you do you stick this in a machine it grabs both ends these are threaded and it pulls and it applies a force and and a displacement so how much this is elongating stuff like that. it can give you all sorts of information right so it applies a force and you get a graph until it yields and then it snaps it fractures it breaks and then you can give that information. So this is a destructive, this is destructive testing. You can give this information to your customer saying, right, it failed here. And you'll have a minimum, right? You'll say, well, I want it to fail at fucking, you know, whatever. And you can also do different temperatures. So you can heat this up and pull it. You can, because it depends what operation you've got. You know what I mean? Because things start to get funky when you start adding temperatures to them and stuff like that and so on and so forth. So putting this to all one side, I have some samples of broken ones, ones that were tested, ones that were pulled. So we'll start with this one. Put that one to one side a minute. So we'll start with this one. So what you've got is that that used to let me. A master of zoom. There we go. So what we have here are test samples, and you can see that that's broken. All right. Hopefully, like so. It used to live there. Ah, see you later. And you can see that it's gone very thin, right? So this is called necking. So what happens is... Oh, I don't know if I've got one. Um, have I got anything like that? Oh, I might do. What's this? Right. So, fucking plastic bag off a bloody... What is it? So when you oh, for fuck's sake, when you get a plastic bag, this is probably not going to show very well. When you get a plastic bag and you pull it, what happens is, is it gets to a point where it slips and then it breaks. Right, I don't know how well that came out because it's clear. You have your yield point, and your yield point is basically where you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling. You think about your Velcro. You're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling, and then it kind of pulls but it stops and what that is is that you've now moved so the force drops off right because you you're applying a force steady you know you're slowly pulling apart and applying a steady force with a, a defined displacement so it's moving at a certain rate and then all of a sudden it gives and what that give is a lot of the times it's just the atomic structure just rearranging right you can just it just goes from this to this, you know, it rearranges, and when it does, it gives. So you'll see a drop in the force, and then it pulls again, because it, it's obviously, now it's re, now it's disjointed. The way I can think about it is a bit like this. Imagine all your atoms, I need another block. This isn't, this isn't going to really work. Oh, there's one. So... Imagine you have a block like this and a block like this, and these are your atoms, just say, right? It's almost like it's like you have two configurations, this one and then this one, right? You know, you imagine there's loads of these stacked together. So this is longer than this, if you get what I mean. Just a bit. It's a bit longer. But it's like they can all rearrange themselves. You know what I mean? That's a bit of a weird explanation. I hope you understand. There's just two... It, it gets very complicated because it depends what the structure is and some materials don't do this but basically um, you you hit the yield point and then this starts to stretch and this is called necking and it stretches and it stretches until it gets to the point where no we're fucking done now right? so when you pull it and it flexes back to the way it was that's elastic, this is plastic deformation when it starts to change physically its shape right 
and then you get just get to UTS and UTS is ultimate tensile strength and it goes and fractures. Right, that's it, buff, it's done. And then you can see that there's a weird pattern. And we could go on about these patterns forever. But you'll see there's a region on the outside, right? This is the stuff that's stretched quite a lot. And then there's a region on the inside. And you can see the grain structure, and the grain structure is absolutely non existent, right? This is really, really tough stuff, is this one. I can't remember what this one was. Um, it might have been 4340. I just don't know. I don't know with that one. But we've got this one. Let me just pull out a minute and wipe it on the back of a red. Um, on the curtains. That's another good one. <laughs> uh, this is a different one, right? So I don't think these are actually this. I think I picked up the wrong ones. I just wanted to show you. If we look at this half, there's hardly any neck in here. Right, there's fuck all to it. And then if you look at the break, right, the break is like a sandbox. It's like, oh, it's a really grainy look. You can see there, look, that's what it looks like. I need to get a macro lens, I really do. It'd be great to get a macro lens, or if the GoPro can do it. Um but yeah, you can see the grain structure there, it's as visible as fuck, right? And it feels you can feel it's like sandpaper. Uh really rough, like forty grit shit. Um, but you can see there that's what we have to deal with and as you can see because this hasn't necked much you can see how let's see if we can get something parallel some parallelogram going on there we go yeah it hasn't necked much at all same with this end there's not much to see on this end but it really hasn't changed diameter that much and that's because you know this stuff although it's um it necked and stuff like this right even though it necked uh, this is a lot more malleable right which means it can take a lot more abuse before it ultimately fails right and that's a good thing this on the other hand this is what we'd call brittle right and it just fucking shit the bed right this is a casting is this one and that's why you have this large grain structure and it's just no it's fucked off now it depends what force these broke at you see you, you might go because oh, all of them are broken you know what i mean all of them are broken this is the whole point you want to know what the limit is so then when you give that information to the customer the engineer working there who's working on the project can go ah right well i need that's fine uh, you know i've got a safety factor of four i'm well well away from that and this steel has checked out for what they said it was going to be what the hell has this got to do with any kind of thing that I'm doing? Um, well, if you'll remember, we had this, uh, the XJ stud. And if you remember, those were twats um, to get out, right? It was absolutely fucking, it was just stuck. Even with the head, the weight of the head, on the one stud, the one tiny stud, right, and belting away, um, and it upside down with its own weight constantly, and giving it a tap and heat and this and it, it did not want to move, right, and there was people going, oh my god, you can't get a thing off. Look, every single case is different, right? Every single case is different. Some of them are so stuck. The rest of them popped out pretty much fine, um, but every case is different and yeah you work there so fuck off <laughs> any road um so these have got bite marks in these were going to go anyway so when they bit them i wasn't that bothered as you saw in the video i didn't really care because it I, but if you did care right I, it's good to show these things you see um unlike some of the youtubers who would kind of you know go out of the way to hide stuff like this you don't want to hide stuff like this. I don't want to hide stuff like this. If you look here, I'm going to zoom. All right, so you can see the bite marks in there. Now, this is the crazy thing. This has bitten into this diameter. Oops, there we go. This has bitten into this diameter, you know, this ever-important diameter. So that is now where this would fail. If you pulled this, it would fail. And it would fail exactly there. I can promise you that straight away. So, what I want to do is I want to replace these with these. Right, so these are stainless steel ones. This isn't the right size, don't worry. There's, there's two different sizes. Um, 
I want to replace these fucked ones. Oh, that went far, didn't it? I want to replace these fucked ones with these stainless steel ones. Now these stainless steel ones um, just have thread, right? And they don't have a reduced diameter. Right? They don't have a reduced diameter. Now, you've got to be careful sometimes. It is smaller, so this diameter is smaller than the major diameter on the thread, but it's not like these ones where they actually have... It, it's a bit more, you can feel it as soon as you put your fingers over the top. That's a lot. Where is anything? <laughs> Just give me a second. Oh, there it is. I knew it was at hand. Ah, uh, right. Oh, battery. No. It's got a flat battery. Not a flat battery, but it's got the battery indicator saying it's going low. So, this one is 6.5, if you can see that. 6.5 there. And the thread is, you know, 7, 8, just say. It's an, eight, an M8, right? This one, on the other hand, is same thing as a 7, 8 when you get it right on the threads but the diameter is 7 right? so you've got to be careful sometimes because it's like, right, is there enough clearance in your thing that you're pushing this through, well obviously because they've got to get around the threads but I'm just saying, depends what your application is, I'm not saying for cylinder studs for any kind of thing, you just got to make sure that sometimes that there is clearance because like this one the different lengths, the different widths, right? The diameter of this is, you know, what's that, 12? The diameter of this is 12. You can see there, right? The diameter, that's 12. And the diameter, that's 10. Well, look at it. Yes, the diameter, that's 10, right? So if this went into the block and then this slid over the top, you have to make sure if it had this diameter down here all the way up it might not fit into whatever goes on here so just be wary don't just randomly make sure you make take your measurements measure twice 40 times and then order on fucking the internet so great well just pop these in they'll fit right i've checked these fit straight in there's no problem no interference or whatever these are stainless steel fucking wonderful however <laughs> these are chinese these are chinese stainless steel all right so, I want to know, are these good enough? Are these good enough? They're a large diameter, right? But even then, I want to know what the difference is, right? So, I've got another two. Because these are two different diameters. So, I've got another two, right? So, as you can see, that's the one for that length, right? And I basically just picked the ones that had the least damage of the, the um, XJ ones. Um, so and there's a smaller one. Yeah. I just wanted two. All right. Let's just get two. Now, usually what you do is you do these in sets of threes. Threes minimum. So you'll have three of these. All right. Um, sorry. No, you don't. I'm thinking of other tests. Um, so, yeah. You just get one of these. Pull it. And away you go. I wanted two because there's two different sizes. I don't know why. I just wanted to do that. Um, but these have to be the same diameter. Right? If we want to compare this, Japanese probably, Yamaha steel to this Chinese stainless steel, we turn them down to the same diameter. Right? So these two here, if you get rid of the top so you can't see what's what, you can see that they're the same diameter. Um, what are we looking at here? So that's 5.099, if you can see that. There we go. And stop rolling, you fuck. And this one is a smidge over, right? So the stainless steel. The percentage is so small that it's not going to matter. And that's another reason why it's good to have the actual test pieces because it won't snap up here. So what you do is you can measure that up there. You know what I mean? So these are, as they say, close enough. There you see, that what five one 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 for the carbon steel, and this one is five point one 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 two. We'll use them. I will. I'll, I will edit that whatsoever, but we'll just use them two measurements because that looks really good. <laughs> these are polished, right? You polish them with a bit of sandpaper, and 
All we're going to do is, like I say, stick these in the tester and pull them. And then at the end of this video, um, no, not the end of this video, we'll end this video. And then when I get the results back, I just want to say when I get the results back, I'll be pulling them. So we'll go and pull these and they'll break and we'll get a readout. And because, like I said, because they're the same diameter, we can apples for apples it. And because these stainless ones have a larger cross-sectional diameter, we can even then calculate it and find out how, you know, in service, what's the difference. So I, this is a test of what's the difference between the materials. That's what this is, the tensile strength of the two, the two materials directly compared to each other. The length doesn't matter. You can make these 20 kilometers long, it doesn't matter. Then we can actually calculate, based off them results, um, what the actual real-world application is. That's why you have to have a standard. Now, these aren't being pulled to a standard. These are just going to be pulled um, because they are actually shorter. Not that it matters. It's just the test you put in. You want to make sure you want to make sure that all your test pieces are the same. Now, if you're going to an international standard, you make sure that all your pieces are the same length, same thread, same thread count, same width, same radius, same everything. With this. It's, we're just comparing these two in isolation, right? We don't care about the world standards. We just care about what the numbers are for these two individual ones as a direct comparison to each other. So I'm not doing it to any standards, so to speak, obviously because they're the wrong fucking length. Um, and I, I think someone will probably ask, so I'll, I'll just notice, so I'll quickly say it. Some of these are threaded, right? So they're threaded in the end. Some of them are not, and if you see, you can let me master zoom. You master zoom. Some of them you can see there's these marks. See, there's a marks there, right? This is because there are two types of mounting. There's a few mountings, but you can either thread them in, right? Put them in the machine they pull, or if you can't get a thread on, it's too small or whatever or blah 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 blah. You can literally just grab the living fuck out of it, and these jaws, my god, do they grab? Right? Well, of course. It grabbed this, didn't move at all, and snapped this. Right, so then fucking jaws are awesome. Um, so there's just in case someone says why are them two different, I've just noticed myself, and I thought I'd just cover that bit. So uh, yeah, this is what engineering is, right? We, this is this is exactly what engineering is. We don't willy nilly just fucking guess, right? Those days were back in the 19, 1850, 1900 kind of eras, right? The days of, my steam engine's better than yours. It is by 4%. But why? You know, and then we start, people start to sit down and go, let's work out actually what's going on with this burning fuel malarkey. And then, you know, out popped thermodynamics. The whole point of doing that is so that we don't have to sit in the back of a fucking work factory now, burning fucking candles and burning bonfires and burning fuel and comparing them by how bright they are and just guessing by eye. Engineering is about finding out and testing, right? Testing, find out what's what. So, this is the thing, right? So, when we come to put this engine back together and people say, well, you've got these stainless steel studs, how do you know how good? Well, I do know how good they are, dickhead. I've tested them, right? It's not on this guessing. Ah, it'll be right. Ah, it's a bit of tiger seal. That'll fucking do. No, no, we don't want any of that shit, right? It's not difficult to do. You can even, this is crazy, you can even send your stuff away to be tensile tested. And I can't remember the price of it is. Um, but let's just say around about, I think it's about 60 quid to 100 quid a test. It might seem high, right? But um, if you're, you know, like you find these guys who are making crash bars or they're making exhausts or something, and, and then, you know, you can buy bolts that have passed the spec. That's the whole point. But if you're like this, right, there's no specs for these. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? They're off eBay, right? You know what I mean? So, and this is the thing. If the tests come back and I don't match this spec, right, so we're not talking about these tests. We get, them, we get the test data. When we calculate the difference between this and this, if, I'm telling you right now, if these don't, equal or surpass this and then won't use them they should they should because the increased diameter but if they don't i won't use them right i'll find an alternative an alternate source that has 
certification on what the specs are. I won't use them. So it's not just about we'll test and see what you know. We'll test just for the sake of a fucking cool video or whatever. No, it's test because I want to make sure it's all right. Now I know people are going to say this is overkill or whatever, but is it? What happens if the tests come back? We calculate and these aren't good enough because they'll be good enough. They'll work. But the fact of the matter is, is that these were designed to be this diameter out of this steel. Um, at spec, not designed. They've been spec to be this design, this diameter, this blah, 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 out of this steel. Because they have a certain tensile strength and have a factor of safety in there. Right? Now, I don't want to fuck around with that. Right? So... We're getting rid of them, and we've come out with some bright spark replacement. But for the sake of interest, for the sake of engineering's sake, for the sake of these videos, this is what this channel's all about. It's about the engineering side of it. It's not about guessing, right? You just don't guess, especially when it's structural things, especially when it's this thing's got to hold itself together. These inside here might be fucking cheese, right? I can't tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's guessing. These might be cheese. These might be fucking stringy, horrible fucking shite. Or even worse, brittle. Right? We've gone not just... We've gone from a different alloy altogether. A carbon steel. And we don't know what the specs of these are, either. Right? These could be fucking monkey metal. We'll find out. That's the whole point. That's the interesting thing. Let's actually find out what the differences is. Uh, differences is, 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 are. Hope that makes sense. And it's good to be back.